Hey guys, if you've been paying attention to the channel at all, this won't be that surprising. This is my newest addition to the studio. It's a vintage, like probably 1960s Genco vibraphone. If you don't know what a vibraphone is, we're going to talk about that. If you don't know why I would personally buy a vibraphone, we'll probably talk a little bit about that. But this is, from the poll that I recently did, the instrument that I purchased. It's probably the most I've ever spent on a musical instrument in one go. And, of course, it would be more on brand for me to get a drum set. And that's what the majority of people voted for in that poll. But I didn't. I've never spent more than $400 in a drum set. I spent about $1,500 on this. But that's a steal for a working vibraphone. And so I really couldn't pass it up. It's really cool. The fact that it's old and vintage means it's tiny. Some modern vibraphones can be like 5 feet long. This is only 4 feet long. And it just fits in my space a lot better. So we'll talk about what a vibraphone is real quick. So a vibraphone is a keyboard percussion instrument, obviously, and it's typically three octaves, although you can buy bigger ones, but this is a standard three octave. And it has metal bars, which makes it the most similar to what some people are probably familiar with from school band, the beginner bell kit. Uh, a nice one is typically called a glockenspiel. This one you probably just want to call a bell kit. But it's basically the same instrument, but scaled up. It's a little bit lower. Uh, here is A440, so this is middle C, and it goes down to an F, and it goes three octaves up to another F. The beginner bell kit is usually only just over two octaves, and middle C is actually off the bottom of it. So it's lower pitched, and there are more notes. But that's not the only difference. Now, it's different from a xylophone or a marimba, in that those have wooden keys. It's different from a crotale set, in that those are like little cymbals, and of course, it has some features that are really similar to orchestral chimes, but of course those, again, they're tubular bells, not really the same instrument. So one of the main things that's unique about a vibraphone, as opposed to pretty much any other mallet instrument, is that it has this sustain pedal. Now you can get glockenspiels at a really high orchestral level that have a sustain pedal, but they're kind of rare. Uh, the tubular bells or chimes have a sustain pedal, uh, but there's only like an octave on them. They're really pretty limited for actual musical playing. They're a sound effect. This is the most common instrument to have this sustain pedal down here. And what that does is if I don't use it, it's a pretty staccato instrument. But if I depress the pedal, the bars will ring for a long time. I don't know if you can still hear that, but I can still hear that. It's still ringing. They just ring for forever. This pedal you can hear, not the quietest thing. I gotta take it apart and clean it out and oil it up, but it is working. Now the way the pedal works is that there is a piece of felt right here in the middle, and it pushes up on the bottom of these bars, and of course that's what stops it from making noise. Until you depress the pedal, the felt comes away, and you get a longer tone. Now, the other interesting feature of most vibraphones is there is a motor down on this end which will spin these little paddles inside of the resonator tubes that will partially close off the tube when it's flat and will open it up when it's vertical, and so you can get a vibrato effect. My motor does work, but I don't have a belt for it right now, so I can't show you, but instead of an even pitch, it'll kind of go wah, 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 which is pretty cool. Most repertoire doesn't call for that, but it's an interesting feature uh, that you can do with it. Now, what's cool is you can use this damper pedal like a piano, so you can play a bunch of notes that sustain together, like I just did. But if that's not preferable, you can actually pedal more often. And you can make them a little bit more separated. To your heart's content. You can also play a bunch of notes and you can mallet dampen, which is kind of cool. So you got a bunch of, of effects you can make on a vibraphone because of how long the thing sustains and because you have a pedal. I am technically a trained percussionist, I have a degree, and so I did a lot of practicing on classical, mostly, mallet work, and this is the most versatile, I think, full-size mallet instrument. 
Most people would say that the marimba is the flagship instrument of mallet percussion, but marimbas are huge. They can be up to five octaves. The bars are typically very wide. You can buy practice marimbas, but they actually they don't have the sustain pedal, so you can't practice that. You don't have to use the sustain pedal with a vibraphone. They're smaller. They're only three octaves, but three octaves is enough to play most repertoire. So I'd say this is the most versatile instrument from a practice perspective. I could practice marimba stuff on here if I wanted. I can practice vibraphone stuff on here, obviously, if I wanted. I have the bell kit, and uh, I could practice xylophone stuff on here. It's sort of at an intermediate size. Um, it's closer to the size of a xylophone, but you could get away with practicing anything on here and just make a slight adjustment to another instrument. <clears throat> you, if you only have a xylophone or a marimba, you can't practice vibe-specific stuff because you don't have the pedal. So that was one thing. Um, and I do have a bunch of students in middle school and high school who need to be practicing these full-size mallet instruments and realistically not just the tiny bell kits. So that was a big factor in why I got this thing for my teaching studio. The vibraphone is also really known as a jazz instrument. It has classical stuff for it. You can play solo repertoire on it. You can obviously practice a lot of things and you can play really whatever music you want on it. It's known as a jazz instrument. So. For example, I'll give you, I think, a 2-5-1 here. Right, you can play comping, chordal accompaniment with four mallets. You can also do soloing with just two mallets. And you can play intervals or single notes. And of course, the pedal gives you a lot of expression. I think that's why it's a jazz instrument. In the old, old, olden days, jazz was played on a lot of xylophones, uh, which you can get a lot of articulation out of, but there's no sustain to the sound. And when the vibraphone was invented, it quickly became a jazz instrument because it has that piano-like expression, which is kind of cool. So I really never learned to play four mallets properly. Um, I really only trained on two mallets for my entire life. So I'm going to have a lot of work to do figuring out how to voice chords with four mallets and uh, really generally how to interpret like jazz chord symbols. And I'm not going to try to be a jazz vibe soloist at any point, but I think it's something that percussionists should probably know how to do. So now I can work on that. Um, and I can also, of course, teach and work on any type of mallet repertoire, like I said. So I don't know how much this vibraphone will be featured on this channel because, of course, it's still a drum channel, but this is a percussion instrument. It's pretty similar to drums, so I thought we'd talk about it. If you got vibraphone questions, let me know. But otherwise, thanks for watching. And, of course, we'll be talking about Swiss rudiments more in this coming weeks because, of course, I have the new book, um, Tambour Ordinance of 1917. Check it out if you haven't. Check out my other books if you haven't. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.